lot of kids our age ain't being none too bright. About the dangers of electricity. And that could spell trouble for you and me. This is the Zap Rap. No matter what your style. Zap Rap. No matter what your click. Zap Rap. We don't mind if you smile. Zap Rap. But let our message stick. You're a sap. If you get zapped. Zap Rap. You know, electricity isn't a bad thing. It helps us light our homes. It helps us dry our hair. It brings us entertainment. It even helps us shave. Shave? Where? There. But just because it's all around us doesn't mean we can take it for granted. That's because electricity ain't smart enough to be choosy. Yeah, it doesn't care whether it fries an egg. Or a kid. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That's why it's wise to remember how electricity gets to us in the first place. Briefly, it starts with power. Power from any number of sources, which is needed to turn huge turbines in generating plants where electricity is actually produced. Fast as the speed of light. The electricity zaps along the miles of big transmission lines until it gets tapped off at local substations, which bring the power to a lower voltage to be sent along bare metal power lines, maybe somewhere around 30,000 volts. That's 30,000 volts moving along bare power lines into our neighborhoods, carried by wooden poles right through our backyard. Finally, the electricity is stepped down some more by the transformer on the pole and sent down into the house along a line called a service drop. Of course, once it's inside the house, it's ours. And most of us never even think about where it comes from. Most of us don't even care. That's our first mistake. That's when we start making it easy for electricity to put our lights out. <laughs> mistake most kids make about electricity is not bothering to understand the stuff or find out why it does what it does. And it's not that complicated. Actually, electricity is a lot like water. In a water system, a pump provides pressure which is needed to move the water forward through pipes and hoses. That's easy. Well, an electrical system works the same way. Only instead of a pump, you have a generating plant. And like the pump putting out water pressure, the generating plant puts out an electrical pressure called voltage. And instead of water running through a hose, you have current running through a wire. But what all of us need to remember is... Uh-oh. <laughs> what we need to remember is that just like water, electricity is always seeking its lowest level, always seeking the ground. And it doesn't care how it gets there. The power company tries to keep this from happening by putting insulators between the poles and the bare metal lines. But touching one of those energized lines, say, with the limb of a tree, will immediately create a path, a sudden line of least resistance that the current flow will use to seek the ground. And what happens if you become part of that path? You, you get, get wrapped. You get that. Oh, that's for the birds. I don't believe it. For, for the, the birds? birds? Use your eyes, guys. The birds sit on the power lines every day without getting electrocuted. It can't be that dangerous. Now look who's being a bird brain. You see, electricity always takes the path of least resistance. And when one little bird lands on that power line, it's still easier for the current to keep flowing like it's going. So why get your feathers ruffled? Electricity is always seeking the ground, remember? And it doesn't care how it gets there. What if that safe little birdie happens to touch the pole or anything connected to the ground with its wings? Oh. Mm. Yep, fried birdie, as the current suddenly finds a quick way down to the ground using the pole and our formerly safe bird as its path. 
Gee, how I know, dumb bird. Right. You'd make a much better connection. Yeah, and you'll lose a lot more than just a few feathers. Look, when the human body gets zapped by electricity, it's really bad news. The current can throw our hearts into spasms or stop them altogether. Yeah, or it can scramble the nerve center that controls breathing. Oh, well, you didn't need those lungs anyway. And you sure don't need the massive tissue damage electricity can cause. Tissue damage? Sure, electricity's just using you as a path. What it's looking for is the ground. No chance to run, no chance to shout. When the juice goes in, the juice comes out. <laughs> Even with the lowest household voltages, the current can freeze you to the wire, trapping you and causing violent muscle contractions that won't permit your fingers to let go of the wire. And if it don't trap you, the zap can really wrap you. Wrap you hard, not only shocking you, but knocking you, leaving you with injuries from the fall, even worse than the shock itself. Yeah, that old zap can be mean, Gene. So how come nobody tells us kids what this stuff can do? Nobody thinks about it. Nope. You see, even though all those towers and substations and poles are carrying thousands and thousands of volts of current right into our neighborhoods and right over our heads, after a while, they all sort of become invisible. They're always there, so we tend to forget about them. OK, 203. Until it's too late for another kid. Some electrical hazards are pretty obvious, like this downed wire. Uh-oh. That thing's just looking for trouble. But whether it's moving around or lying still, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that you and your friends had better keep away from it. And that someone needs to call the power company to come fix it. Who didn't know that? Yeah. What else are you gonna do? Shake hands with it? <laughs> okay, okay. But what if you two had a kid, like George here? A guy who likes to take the short way home from school? And suppose that you had a downed wire nearby, draped over a chain-link fence down the way, where it was hard to see, especially for George. No, hold it. Get the picture? Aw, uh, too bad, old buddy. Better take the long way around <laughs> next time. Very funny. <laughs> see, there was no way he could have known that fence was energized, unless he knew enough to look around first. Which he didn't. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Think you guys could do better? Yeah. No, no problem. problem. OK. What if you're in a car wreck and the cars hit a power pole? Uh-oh. You're OK. Just a little shaken up. Especially when you see a line down on the hood, energizing the car. We're not dead? No. As long as you're in the car, you're OK. Kind of like that bird sitting on the wire, remember? Well, if I'm OK, I'm getting out of there. Hey, no, man. Hey, what happened? You're fried, that's what. Why? Electricity's always seeking the ground, remember? As long as you're in the car, you're all energized the same. But when you have part of you in the car and another part of you steps out... Down to the ground? You got it. That's why it's best to just stay in the car until help arrives. What if we're about to catch on fire and we got to get out of there? Well, only as your very last resort, you can try opening the door, standing on the rocker panel, and jumping free with both feet together. What? Look, it's only dangerous if you put your foot down and provide the curb with a direct path to the ground, right? For sure. So, jumping free with both feet together is a way to clear the car and beat the zap. But that's something you wouldn't think about unless you knew how electricity works. And we're aware that being grounded has nothing to do with you folks not letting you out of the house, electrically speaking. But why wait until you get into a tight spot? Most accidents with electricity happen because kids like us forget to keep our eyes open and our heads up. Or do something just plain dumb. Dig this. Knew a guy named Freddy was a heavy metal kid, and when his friend said, there you go, Freddy did. He climbed right over the substation fence. Too bad about where we ain't seen him since his app rock. Zap, 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 rock. Z
Cindy. Knew a girl named Patty who was up on the roof, putting up an antenna just for a goof. She raised it high without using her eye. Poor Patty lit up like the 4th of July. Zap, rap. Zap, rap. George. I knew a busy boy whose name was Bobby. Flying kites was his hobby. He circled up and down and around just fine. Too bad about that power line. Zap, rap. Mike knew a guy named Dennis, the outdoor type. Decided to lay some irrigation pipe. He raised it higher, didn't see the wire. Now his fields are getting drier and drier. Zap rap. So here's to all the kids who take a dare, who see the signs and just don't care. And here's to the jerks who just for fun shoot off insulators with the little guns. And here to the fools who climb the poles and must be young at heart because they ain't growing old. And here's to the kids who like to be on top till they lean their ladders on the service drop. This is the Zap Rock. And now it's time we gotta go. Zap Rock. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Try to keep our warnings in your head. We know it's tough being a kid, but, but it's tougher, tougher being dead. dead.